morning, everyone. Today's gonna be one of my favorite kind of days. It's new bike day. probably gonna hear a lot of thuds and bangs in the video because my daughter and my mother are upstairs playing right now because today is a holiday no school day that was a loud one all right let's grab this new bike check it out this right here is the Orbea Rayon. You guys have been asking me to try out a Rayon for years and I have been unable to secure one because they've been selling too fast for media folk like me to get a loaner from the company so Pop this thing open and get a look at a bunch of rides on the Orbea Rayon. Now, before I do cut this box open and get a look at this bike for the first time ever, I wanna let you all know Jensen USA, a big partner of mine, sponsored this video and made it happen. Jensen is a leading online retailer, but they're also a retailer in the United States of America for Orbea cycles. Getting an Orbea is as easy as getting over to the Jensen USA website. I've got a link to the Rayon page right in the description down below. Scroll down, hit that link, brings you over to Jensen USA, and they've got a ton of Rayons in stock and available now. Even better, when you get a complete bike from Jensen USA, it doesn't show up like this. It shows up in a Jensen USA box, and it's a really, really easy and quick process to get it ready to ride on the trail. Usually you just put on handlebars and a front wheel and you're dialed in. I also wanna let you know, anything you purchase at those links down below over to Jensen USA, that helps support my channel. It's a really big part of how I'm able to make all these videos happen. So thanks to all of you for your support. Thanks to Jensen USA for sponsoring this video. Big shout out to Orbea for loaning me this bike. This is just a loaner bike. I've got to give it back at some point. I hope that's a long time from now. Let's pop this open and see what kind of a bike we have down here to enjoy. Oh, oh, oh. Cool. Ooh, that's gonna film nice. Let's check this out. Are you guys ready? There we go. Let's get some of this foam off of here. Might cut these guys down. Oh, you got XT brakes on this? That's cool. I'm turning over a new leaf for 2023 here. Getting a little bit better at all the things. Park Tool sent some torque wrenches, so thanks to Park Tool. And I'm gonna try using these, six Newton meter, get this as tight as it should be, and no tighter. I can already tell I want a deeper dropper seat post, so I'll swap out this short dropper for a full 200. And then I'm gonna swap out uh, the tires. I can't ride XO casing tires, XO plus, either one, no hope. I actually quite like the Shimano pedals over the last few years. I'm gonna run them on this bike. I know you guys hate it when I do this, but um, I wanna ride these stock wheels a little bit, but I'm gonna update that rear free hub body. It's got like 20 points of engagement or something. I'm used to having like basically instant engagement. And I start to not like the whole bike if I go to pedal and it doesn't go forward. So then I talk negatively about the whole thing, which isn't fair. This is a bike review, not a rear hub review. So I'm gonna swap these wheels off with my regular Industry 9 wheel set. Um, I will ride this wheel set once I get a Star Ratchet update. I'm just hoping to ride today Today, I'm not gonna wait for parts to show up by tomorrow because I wanna ride right now. So yeah, the Rayon. 160 millimeters of rear travel, 170 up front. Pretty aggressive geometry, 64 head angle. Pretty lengthy wheelbase, 460 reach here. Quite a departure from the uh, short travel Occam and Rise I've ridden previous from Orbea. For reference, I'm five foot eight. This is a size medium bike. Everything I test here in the channel is size medium and I'm always five foot eight, hopefully. For my first test ride or two, I didn't set it up exactly how I told Orbea I would, sorry. We're gonna start off with these wheels. I'll order up the updated Star Ratchet. Cut the bars down to 760. I am gonna try a full 200 mil dropper post. I had to set up the suspension. I've got about 180 PSI in the rear shock. I lowered the fork down to about 78 PSI. I do have volume spacers for this rear shock, should it require that, which it might. Um, I'm not gonna put anything in the locker down here. Maybe I could fit a multi-tool, but then I'm gonna forget that there's a multi-tool in here and I will lose a multi-tool. Okay, uh, let's go try this thing out a little bit. I think we should. Just like describing Snoop Dogg or Steve Miller, we're aware to start with the Orbea Rayon. The bike is already well known with substantial screen time on Pink Bikes Academy and with just about every other YouTube channel out there already covering it in depth. But don't worry, today your favorite YouTube channel will look into the Spanish Superbike. 160 millimeters of rear travel, 170 millimeters of front travel, you can totally race this bike and it won't complain if you never fill out an entry form, sign a waiver, or write a check to an event promoter. Do you still even write checks to race? It's been that long since I last entered anything. That is, besides the slowest race ever to a six-digit subscriber count on YouTube, and that doesn't even really count. 
since you're probably at work right now and have plenty of time to burn. I'll say you can go look up all the specs on your own, that way I don't have to bore you with the numbers, nor does Rebea have to get frustrated at me for getting all of them wrong. You're here because you want to know how it feels to ride this enduro sled. The Ryone has a really, really cool feel. You don't notice the impulse suspension travel at first, it hides that really well, and I like that. But when the going gets less Prius and more Alabama rock bouncer, the Ryone seamlessly trades its flamenco for fully distorted power cords straight from Cataclysm. As soon as you wonder if that line was a good idea, you're gliding away, getting ready to pump that next rock. The Ryone feels like a trail bike on smoother bits of trail. I really like the way it jumps, especially on man-made lippy jumps, but also on classic bike park style, less ramped, more cheese wedgy takeoffs. The suspension provides enough support through the spring alone that it really pops. I'm not talking a little pop, more like a cricket who happened to fall into an open can of Red Bull, then avoids drowning by simply drinking the entire thing, then hopping out. That's more pop than an entire Midwestern soda fountain. It's so my first couple rides in the Ryan. I gotta say, I wasn't exactly stoked on how jumping was going. Since then, went and added a bigger volume reducer. I went up just 0.2. I also added about 20 more PSI to the rear shock. I'm 170 pounds. I thought I had it at 180, put the pump on, it was down to 160. So after adding the reducer, I bumped it all the way up to 185 and made a very, very noticeable change for the better. Now I downright enjoy jumping this bike. I also added two more tokens to the fork. Anyhow, let's go ride some mountain bike trails. The Ryone does what a trail bike does. It floats along single track, amplifying rider inputs rather than hiding them beneath a weighted blanket that's fresh out of the washer. But a bit like Roosevelt advised, the Ryone has that big stick that'll get you out of whatever danger situation you might have encouraged yourself to enter, sort of. When it gets into proper enduro territory, the frame and suspension are at home. The fly in the cable grease comes down to the few of the stock components. Sure, you can ride a stock and enjoy that extra protein, but you will get frustrated when you realize the stock dropper is only 150 millimeters a drop. You'll notice the stem will slip on the steerer tube with a small tumble, and you'll find yourself more nervous than a pedo on his first day of prison when the wheels start to flex during those big impacts. I just tried to get fancy and do a little thing. My bike tipped over on the ground. And this is like the second or third time this has happened. Um, the handlebar slipped substantially on the stem. I followed the torque spec and I did, you know, six Newton meters when I clamped it with my park tool torque wrench. Six Newton meter, get this as tight as it should be. And no tighter. But, keep slipping. It even slipped while riding a little bit. So anyhow, I'm looking at this and I still have like, you know, you know, there's three, maybe four millimeters of space from the steer to the top of the stem there. So what we're gonna do to try to fix this problem is move. Oh my gosh. Yeah, they have these spacers with little spikes and notches in them instead of regular spacers. I mean, nachos are cool and all, but I don't know if I want them in my headset. So hopefully now that the stem is more purchased on the steerer, it gets better grip. And I'm gonna try cleaning the steerer tube with some alcohol and I'll put some carbon assembly prep on there, which has the plastic beads for more friction. At the end of the day, I wish this just had a regular headset like every other bike I've ever owned. I made a few changes to the bike. Ultimately, I spent the most time on the bike with only a few small, simple swaps. A longer dropper seat post, which is about 200 bucks. A set of double down tires, again, about 200 bucks and the upgraded ratchet in the free hub, about $130. For me, these were necessities. But the drivetrain works well, the brakes work awesome, the bike even came with 165 millimeter crank arms. I do prefer the Shimano Ice Tech rotors over the stock Galfer units, and I experienced the Galfer rotors loosening up a couple of times. A lot of folks say they love in-frame storage. I certainly would not make my decision to buy a bike based solely around that. For one, not all in-frame storage is created equal. The Orbea has a small trap door, it's barely large enough for a multi-tool and plug kit, and it was so tight it needed a series of Russian nesting doll bags to basically fit everything in there. Okay, there we go. Did you guys time that? It's not fast. In-frame storage is really cool. Uh, it is better than not having it, but it is not a game changer like some folks say. I. In real life, I'd rather have a tool in my pocket than having to go through all that because now I got to go reverse and load the bike up again. Let me put my multi-tool in here and I don't want it to like fall in there because it might get lost forever. <laughs> yeah, if you don't use the bag, your tool will fall down in there and be really hard to get out. So you have to use the, the series of the Russian doll bags. So we're going to compare that in-frame storage to this. Easy three fingers. Easy three instead of a tight two. And then the multi-tool, significantly easier to get to. 
Or Bay, I did have a multi-tool that fits into their link, but it's just so stubby you can't use it for much. I think this is a better implementation of the whole in frame storage. There you go. As dorky as Specialized is, I do think they, they did get the field goal with this one. But those are minor gripes. My memories of the Ryone are of really enjoying the trails and trying lines I'd only dreamed of previously. Rock rolls were rolled, boulders were doubled, and trails were, well, manualed. Let's get Locker Room and compare the Ryone to some of its rivals. While it looks more like the Stump Jumper, I felt the Ryone slots in between the Ibis Ritmo and Pivot Firebird. The Ryone pedals much better than the Stump Jumper and carries speed better through the rough. It also likes to ride a bit higher in its travel than does the Specialized, which is a really cool trait. The Ryone feels great with a little quicker rebound, and it's a mix of nimble supportive suspension with a safety net for when things get more wild than a bear that's high on its own supply. A bear did coke! The Firebird felt bigger and more stable, though the shorter rear end left some balance still on the table. Which is odd, the suspension was a tad more reliable, but the short back end was a little bit skittish. This could be nice on slower trails, but the Firebird in general did feel bigger than the Ryone. I like both, but for mellower terrain, the Ryone is more well-rounded. A race bike, I could see folks with good technical background preferring the Ryone, but folks who want the bike to do more, enjoying the pivot a little bit more. Now you're not supposed to cross shop the Ritmo and the Ryone, but many of you will. I can tell you you're wrong, but your wallet definitely won't. Both are great bikes, and they do have kind of similar traits. The Ryone rides more confidently in the rough, the extra travel really is nice. But for more average level trails, the Ritmo does a lot, but it's 13 millimeters less travel. Traction is similar, and the Ritmo holds its speed in a similar way. Given it's a little less travel, it's even more fun on the mellower stuff than the Ryone. That said, between the two bikes, oh man, it's almost a toss-up. The Yeti SB160 is one absolutely badass bike, and I spent a day at Whistler Bike Park going back and forth between these two bikes. It was such a fun comparison, I'll publish a completely separate video about that. The bat. I don't know if it's truly a fault of the bike, but I've smashed my right foot, which is my rear and lower foot, four times on the Ryone. I don't think it's a result of any one single thing. I think it's a combo of my own riding mistakes Yikes. combined with the more nimble nature of this bike. My leg. This summer, I've also been riding my Ritmos, Processes, and SB160 quite a bit. And on those bikes, I have not had any sort of foot slip issues beyond smashing pedals into obstacles on the Ritmos. So there is something going on between me and the Ryone with foot placement. Maybe it's a fluke, but my purple toe is unhappy, and I'm doing my best to coerce that toe to get my foot back to that five-star Yelp rating. The Ryone is almost trying not to be as cool of a bike as it is. It's able to blend trail bike efficiency and fun with bigger bike muscle. I think Rabea did something really cool with this bike, and I've really enjoyed my time on it. Is it okay? Kind of our stuff right in front of where you were. It's been a blast checking out the Orbea Rayon. This bike, you were talking about it in the comments for the last couple years, and you guys were not wrong. It is a really fun all around bike. It's almost like a big brother to the Ritmo, so I was stoked to check it out. Big thanks to Orbea for trusting me with the loaner bike. Huge thanks to Jensen USA for sponsoring this and making it all possible. I couldn't be here right now without not only you guys and your support, but also Jensen. Uh, if you want to learn more about the Ryone, I've got a link in the description below. It has all the pricing, geometry, build kit specs, and all that, all through Jensen USA. And uh, if you click over there, anything you purchase will also help support the channel. So thanks in advance. Big thanks to all of you for being here. Again, it wouldn't be possible without you guys returning, subscribing, all that. So without further ado, see you in the comments. Peace and wheelies.